I'm almost embarrassed to make this video because it took me so long to finally learn this. I'm not sure why I waited so long to play around with it, but I recently did and it's changed how I work. So today I wanna to share what I learned about making custom LUTs in DaVinci Resolve and why if you aren't using them, you're wasting your time, probably. A LUT or a lookup table is basically a conversion. Don't make it more complicated than that. It converts things from one thing to another. That's it. Before I tell you why that is important, let me show you what my workflow has been for a very long time so you can see why it's important for yourself and why I'm so excited about it. Now, I shoot in S-Log3, but these tips apply to any type of footage as you'll see in a minute. So once I'm done shooting, I import all of my files to a working folder usually on my desktop. If you'd like to see me make a video on my entire workflow for creating a YouTube video, let me know in the comments below. I then import my video videos into Resolve. For talking heads, it's usually only one or two videos. For B-roll, it might be 20 to 40 additional clips. At this point, well, you know what raw footage looks like. It needs some love. There are basically two things we need to do before we can start editing the footage. The first is to convert the footage into a Rec. 709 workspace so it looks normal to our human eye. And the second is we need to adjust the exposure, saturation, white balance, etc., so the footage is nice to look at or matches the style you're going for. To change the footage over to Rec. 709 or whatever else you want to use, you add a color space transform. On the color page, I usually add a node, option S, and put it on the second one just so it's its own thing. You don't want to add too many things or adjustments to the same node in case you need to alter something later, but it doesn't really matter. I won't judge you. So once you add the color space transform, you have to match the settings to what you used on your camera. For me, I have to pick the input color space as S3 gamut cine profile. Then I choose the input gamma as S log three. Then we want to bring the output gamma over to a Rec. 709 workspace. I don't think you need to change the output gamma space to Rec. 709, but I do it just in case. And boom, now we have Rec. 709 colors and we can start making adjustments. I mean, just the act of adding the color space transform to footage, I know it doesn't take a lot of time, but it's a pain in the butt and it adds up. And that's where creating your own LUTs comes in. I didn't realize it, but I didn't have to add the color space transform and pick settings every time, but I did. Ugh. I could just make a LUT for that one step. That's it. A LUT just to save me going through all of those drop downs. I wish I had learned that way sooner, but wait, there's more. So the thing is, especially when creating YouTube videos with the same camera for every video, you often make the same changes over and over, right? I often shoot my talking head videos here and need to always make the same adjustments. So why was I manually making the same adjustments to my clips every time I imported my videos? Talk about a waste of time. For example, I know I always bring up the shadows because I shoot pretty dark. I always add some gain. I like to bump up the saturation. Those are things I do every single time. So a fast starting point is for me to do like 90% of the adjustments in a base layer, we'll say, or to make a custom LUT for that. And then I can fine tune each future clip however I want case by case for my actual project without taking the time to have to get to that base layer for every project. So let's say I wanna make a base layer LUT for when I import videos for my talking headshots. Here's how to do it. Go to the color tab where we have our nodes. I have the color space transform node and before it, I have my adjustment node. People who are actually good at grading will break this into multiple nodes, but I found that's more than I needed to do. And it's fine to just make all my adjustments on one node. The reason it doesn't matter here is because once the LUT has been made, we can't change this stuff anyway. So as long as we get it right now, it doesn't need to be highly organized. So let's bump up the shadows. Let's tinker with the gain. I like using waveforms, but sometimes I like using parades. Just saying. I'll add a bit of saturation. Sometimes if the color looks off, I'll adjust the white balance, but that's something you should do case by case. That counts as fine tuning, so we don't wanna do that for this LUT here. Again, we're just making a generic base layer we can apply to all of our footage. We don't wanna take things too far. We save that for the fine tuning. Also, I found things like the color of my shirt or background lights affects white balance, which is another reason why I don't make too many adjustments here and save it for when I'm working on individual clips. More on that in a later video. Okay, once we're done with our base layer adjustments, we know we'll wanna use on practically all of our footage. Now it's time to make some magic. 
right click on the clip and select Generate LUT. Now it's going to offer us some choices, 17 point, 33 point, and 65 point cubes. These change how big the file of the LUT is. 17 point is like 1D in a sense. It only stores enough information to change one plane. Think like brightness. But we want to edit colors and brightness and other settings, so we'll never use the 17 point LUTs. I saw a number of videos recommending 33 point cubes as the most efficient one, but after more research and testing of my own, I always choose 65 point cube for max quality. It offers the most information to store in a LUT, and while the file was like five megabytes compared to like 0.5 megabyte of the 33 point LUT, even though it's bigger, I found no difference in performance while video editing on my M1 Max. So then you save it to your desktop or downloads folder, and once you have done that, go and make a copy of that file. Go back to Resolve. Still in the color tab, in the top left of the screen, click on LUTs. There you can right click on any of the LUT categories and it should say reveal and finder. Sorry my window friends, I forget what it would say for y'all. This is just a fast way to find the folders where Resolve stores its LUTs because you wanna make your own folder. Gosh, I hate using finder. <laughs> I miss windows sometimes. Once you've found the main LUT folder and make your own custom folder, I made one called Ev's LUTs. Here you can see I was playing around with making other custom LUTs and the 65.1 is my main one at the moment. I need to do some housekeeping in here. It really is so easy though, once you get familiar with these steps. Since you copied the LUT you made earlier, you can just paste it in your new folder. Or if you didn't copy it yet, go back and do that now. Once it's in there, go back into Resolve, right click on the LUTs on the left, any of the files or folders, and make sure you click Refresh. Your shiny new folder should pop up, and there inside is your very own professional LUT. Amazing. Okay, so now let's start from scratch. Here's me starting a new project. I import my footage. It's ungraded log footage and looks like crap. Now let's pop over to the color tab and instead of having to add a color space transform and making all those adjustments, just right click the clip, click on LUTs. Oh snap, there it is, Ev's LUTs and boom. Oh, it's beautiful. How cool is that? Now we're 90% done and all that's left is the fine tuning where we can bump up or boost more colors, brightness, shadows, white balance, color shifting, etc. Now I said earlier I often import 20 to 40 B-roll clips and that might be on a different camera too, right? Since I just got a different camera for my B-roll and since on that I shoot on S-Log2 instead of S-Log3, so what I did is I just went through that process again with slightly different tweaks and save that as my S-Log2 or name the LUT file for my other camera. See, now I'm starting to save time like a champ, especially when I'm working with multiple cameras on the same project. If I have LUTs created for each camera, I can quickly get to where I wanna be so I can focus on what's important, editing and making the video have beautiful flow. See, isn't this great? I did not know it was this easy. I was overcomplicating it, being like, I'm not smart enough for LUTs. But it turns out I am. And like I was saying, even if you don't use ungraded log footage and just shoot with say, no picture profile and 8-bit, well you probably still make changes to your footage and wanna give it a tiny bit more color or take down the sharpening or whatever. Just make a lot for that. In this game, there are a million little things to remember. I'm a one-man band over here, which is fun, I love it, but sometimes you forget little things. And as you grow, not only do you want a more consistent look with your footage, more importantly, you want an efficient workflow. And I think generating your own LUTs is a very efficient thing to do. Once you understand the basics and play around with it, you can very easily make custom LUTs for all kinds of things. It's cool, it's fun, it makes you sound impressive, so I highly recommend you give it a shot. It's saving me a lot of time now, and hopefully it'll save you time too. That's it for today. Let me know if you found value with this video in the comments below or with a big ol' like. I've literally worked with Resolve for years and only started doing this recently. Did you learn about it sooner than I did or were you doing what I was doing too? Also, if you like me sharing tips in Resolve, let me know. On this channel, I bounce around a bit between the gear I'm using, what's working for growing my YouTube channel, and how I edit videos. But I love helping others out. So if there are things in particular you are curious about, let me know. If you are able to thumbs up the video, comment, or even better, sub to the channel, it's the only way I can grow my channel. So if you take time to do that, thank you very much. In case you haven't seen my other Resolve video where I found the easiest way to stick objects, check out that video here. Otherwise, here's what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. 
As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Sad Studio. Dad!